live. Um, where uh, if you have a video, um, if you have a camera on your computer, maybe in the next couple weeks, um, if the Lord say so, you'll be able to join me as we discuss this topic. Um, again, if you're a seeker of biblical truth like myself, um, we want to explore this subject from Genesis to Revelation. But before I get started, let me look to the Lord. Most righteous and holy God, as we look into your word, we ask you, Father God, to anoint us, Lord, from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Help us, Father God, to understand your word. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Again, the subject that we're going to be looking at is marriage and divorce. Um, I ask you that you send me your questions. Um, tonight I won't be able to take questions, uh, but you can actually send them to me. In other words, you can send them or you know type in your comments as we go. But if you have questions that you'd like for me to add to the list of questions around this subject of marriage and divorce, please email it me or uh, send it to YouTube, and I will surely add it to this list. Um, Again, marriage and divorce, and if you're a seeker of biblical truth, let me repeat myself again, now you'll be able to uh, walk with us as we go through this subject. Let me just touch on this. Marriage and divorce must be studied holistically rather than separate into par separate into parts. Let me read it again. Marriage and divorce must be studied holistically rather than separated into parts. One will never fully understand the entire concept without studying all parts. And so the reason why we're doing this and we're looking at the, um, the Old Testament, we first must understand the customs of marriage and how it was put together in the Old Testament by the Israelites. You see, my brothers and sisters, God tell us in his word that knowledge is power and ignorance is weakness. We must first study to show ourselves a workman that can rightly divide the word of truth. In Hosea chapter 4, verses 6, this is talking to Israel as God divorced Israel. It says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Pinpoint the cause of man problem. Lack of knowledge. The lack of knowledge does not stem from a shortage of information, but rather from information rejected. The result of this will be that Israel will be removed from its place as God representative to proclaim his revelation to the world. In other words, my brothers and sisters, God wants us to be able to study his word and understand what thus says the Lord. In the New Testament, um, everything I read, by the way, is coming from the New King James Version. In the New Testament, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 through 17, a proven and disapproved work, it says in verse 14, it says, Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to, to, to no profit, to the ruin of the errors. Verse 15 says, Be diligent to uh, present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly divine in the word of truth. And so, and it's verse 16, it says, But shall profane and hyper babbling, for they will increase to more ungodliness, and their message will spread like cancer. In Matthew chapter 24, again, I'm not touching on uh, marriage and divorce, I'm just showing you what it means, uh, what God talk about knowledge and how important it is. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 45, Jesus, the illustration of two servants, it says in verse 45, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season? In other words, God is looking for a people who can spread his word and rightly divide the word of truth, so the people, the people can understand what thus said the word. In other words, you know, brothers and sisters, we as Christians, we must understand the doctrine of the word of God, not merely just go to church and look at our Bible once in a while, but we must understand the doctrine of God's word. In 2 Timothy chapter 5, he talks about the elder who does this well, who does the work and doctrine of God, must or must be paid or deserve a double honor. My brothers and sisters, ignorancy or lack of knowledge in God is not, it should not be tolerated. One should educate themselves, but that's the only way you can know what's true and what's false. Again, tonight our subject is marriage and divorce. As we look at um, what we're going to touch on tonight, let me just give you some questions that I think will be answered tonight uh, based on the, the things that we have put together. Number one, 
What were some of the customs for marriage in the Old Testament? I believe that will be answered. Uh, what was the average age of couples who got married in the Old Testament? What was the legislation under the Mosaic Law? How was the bride chosen? What was a liberate marriage? What did it mean when a woman was betrothed? And number, number seven, how was marriage consummate in the Old Testament? So what we're going to look at tonight, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 2. If you could get your Bibles, and uh, I'll give you some time for you to get your Bible. Um, in Genesis chapter 2, starting at 18, uh, verses, from 18 to 24, that's Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 to 24. We're going to read some parts of it, not all of it. And let's begin in verse 18. And it says, And the Lord said, And the Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Let me just read some of the information that I, I sent out uh, via um, my, my, my website. What you want to do is uh, download the Word document on podcasts. Download the Word document on podcasts. So you'll be able to follow along. Again, let me just give you some time for that. Uh, download the information that's on podcasts. Look at the Word document. And then you'll be able to follow along. The origin, origin of marriage. Marriage was instituted by God when he declared, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Genesis 2 verses 18. Turn your Bibles to Genesis 2 verses 18. So God fashioned a woman and bore to the, brought her to the man. Unseen woman, Adam exclaimed, this is, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. Genesis 2 verses 23. This passage also ex ex examines the truth that a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. They shall become one flesh. Again, we're going to explore this one flesh concept. This suggests that God's ideal for a man to be the husband of one wife and for the marriage to be permanent. Let me just read this again. The suggestion that God ideals is for a man to be, to, to be the husband of one wife and for the marriage to be permanent. Let's take a look um, at uh, Genesis 2 verses um, 18 and it says, And the Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Verse 21 says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took, and he took one of his rib and closed up the flesh in its place. Verse 22 says, When the rib which the Lord God had taken from, from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Verse 23 said, And Adam said, This is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman, because she was taken out of a man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother, and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now, let's, let's look at this. Let's look at this. And, and again, when I look at the concept of this one flesh suggestion, and then you read the Bible, and you read about Samson, you read about um, uh, 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 David, you read about... Um, 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 Solomon, and you saw that they had multiple wives, and so because of that, my brother, my brothers and sisters, you ask yourself, one flesh. Well, God intent that was one man, one woman, and both of them should become one. This is the only time in the Bible, or the only time in mathematics, that one uh, uh, equal two, or two equals to one. And so you see, my brothers and sisters, it says, in, in, again in Genesis. Uh, 24, therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now, we got to understand that this is what God intended marriage to be. But you see, my brothers and sisters, it's not as simple as that. Because you see, something happened along the way. 